This is Dinner Date, the show where people hope to find true love through their love of good food. Not sure how I like the lemons yet, but definitely open to, to having a squeeze. One lucky person will be getting the chance to find romance as they enjoy three very special meals cooked for them by three very special blind dates. I think that the spice is always right, so I, I'm feeling, feeling excited for a, for a spice evening. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Today's dinner date is 23-year-old diamond valuer Richard from Wimbledon. I absolutely love the diamond industry. It's so niche, it's so rare. The fact that I'm working with luxury products all day long. I work in the, the love industry. I, mean, I make people's dreams come true. And Richard loves an eye-catching outfit. He's not bashful when it comes to his wardrobe. I massively think that what you wear does reflect your, your personality, and there are going to be so many guys in a bar wearing exactly the same clothing, but there's always going to be one person that stands out. Richard's a diamond geezer, but what sort of lady would cut it for him? I want someone who's pretty, pretty laid back, they're relaxed, up having fun, and they're also the life and soul of the party. I'm ready to have some sort of relationship, so bring it on. That's what he fancies in a date, but what does he like on a plate? I'll usually put anything in my mouth, to be honest, but guilty pleasure is always an amazing fill at stake. I'm quite open to experimenting, where I'll just chuck anything in the pan and see how it tastes, and uh, usually it's pretty tasty. Richard is going to be given five menus, each put together by a potential blind date. The five ladies behind the menus have all come up with a three-course meal, but Richard will only be having dinner with three of them. He'll choose his date based on the menus he most likes the look of. So, who are the ladies behind the menus? Oh, so menu one. I may not be the tallest person, but I can jump. I can jump with all my might. Menu one is from 25-year-old PA and netball fanatic Jane. It's got not one, but two starters, a hearty lamb main and Rocky Road dessert. But will it have Richard cock a hoop? To kick off, we have mini surf and turf kebabs with spinach and feta filo pastry parcels, half-time slow-roasted lamb shanks, supported down the wings by cheese and leek mash. Sounds like she's quite into, her, quite into her cheesy foods. That suits me, I'm quite a, a cheesy person as well. Double trouble, Rocky Road. Double trouble, I'm quite a mischievous person. We could be good partners in crime. On to menu two. I've done quite a lot of online dating. It was a bit of a pastime when I was a student. It was cheaper for me to get someone else to buy me drinks. 24-year-old yoga bunny Alex, who works in advertising sales, is behind menu two. There's a classic beef wellington and a panna cotta pud, but will it turn Richard's world topsy-turvy? Beef wellington with caramelised carrots with red wine juice. Nothing wrong with having food smothered in red wine. Even if it doesn't taste good, you've got the wine which you can consume. Vanilla panna cotta drizzled in a fresh strawberry sauce. Nothing wrong with drizzling sauce. Overall, it seems like a really interesting menu, so... Definitely one to consider. So, on to menu three. I really enjoy belly dancing. It's certainly a bit of fun, and belly dancing is an ancient fertility ritual. Menu three is from 24-year-old recruitment consultant Emily. With her Thai-style starter and Moroccan meaty mane, will it be something Richard wants in his belly? Let's get to know each other. Mix or derbs. So... Already, she wants to get to know each other. No problem with that. I love a good icebreaker. Juicy Moroccan meatballs sounds absolutely amazing. I've been to Morocco many times. On to menu four. My friends would probably describe me as definitely one of the posh ones of the group. Definitely surprises people when I say, oh, no, I'm, a, I'm from Essex. The fourth menu comes from 23-year-old sales executive Alison. It's a classy offering with a fillet steak and a lemon cheesecake. But will Richard think the only way is Essex? One way to a man's heart. She's chosen steak. That is the way to my heart. How do you like these lemons? Luscious lemon cheesecake. Not sure how I like the lemons yet, but definitely open to, to having a squeeze. Finally, 
on to Man U 5. I'm quite competitive. I won a t wet t-shirt competition judged by the Hoff, and I didn't even take any of my clothes off. The fifth and final menu comes from 24-year-old estate agent and tennis fan, Poppy. Her menu's like a night out, starting with a vodka shot, then a curry, and ending with a messy kiss. But will Richard think she's served up an ace? Break the ice with a vodka shot. Smoked salmon mousse and home-baked bread. I absolutely love a bit of vodka, and she knows you need to always line your stomach before you're going on a big night out. Kiss me quick liqueur, soaked strawberry eaten mess. Nothing wrong with um, kissing on the first date. More of a passionate kiss, though, than a quick one. He's seen all five menus on offer, but which three have taken his fancy? For me, it's going to be the final three. Number three, number four, and number five. So, Richard has chosen menu three from Emily, menu four from Alison, and menu five from Poppy. Over the next three nights, Richard will meet each of the ladies behind the menus he's chosen. They'll all be making him a slap-up three-course meal, but who will he want to see for seconds at the end of the week? First to cook for Richard is recruitment consultant and belly dancer Emily. I've been single for about three years. In that time, I've had my fair few uh, dates, definitely, but no relationships take me off the market. So, what sort of man would make Emily shake her thing? I quite like a man who's taller than me, and I do like quite sort of broad and muscular men, um, just because it makes me feel a little bit more petite. I'm five foot seven and not the smallest person. Will Richard measure up? When he saw Emily's menu, he was keen to get to know her over her mixed hors d'oeuvres. He thought the Moroccan tagine sounded amazing. But will her food live up to expectation, or will it all go belly up? <laughs> Emily starts at the beginning with the chicken satay for a mixed hors d'oeuvres. She combines lime, soy sauce, honey, and peanut butter in a bowl. She then adds garlic, and a mystery ingredient. I'm not even sure what it is, but it smells like it would go quite well. Bung it in anyway. It's looking not terribly appetising, <laughs> to be honest. Emily adds the chicken to the sauce to marinate, and it's onto the dessert. The all-important thing with this dessert is just making sure that the puddings come out of the moulds that they're in, so otherwise that could be a bit disastrous. Don't want any failed fondants. Melt the butter first. Because I haven't got a brush, just going to use some kitchen towel dipped in the butter. The chocolate is then melted. So lots of chocolate and lots of butter. The key to a good dessert, in my opinion. Oh, and not more butter with the chocolate. Bit more. The whole packet. Great. I think I'm going to take that out of there for a minute. Then it's time to add some eggs, sugar, flour, and give it a whisk. Now I've got to pour the chocolate into the mixture. So, what's next? So now the butter's gone hard inside the ramekins. I've got to put more melted butter inside. Oh, more. That's one way to butter up a date. Timing is everything when it comes to these puddings. They've got to have a nice gooey centre. Uh, I think kind of that's the real proof of the pudding, so to speak. Emily will cook the fondants when her date arrives, so it's onto the Thai fish cakes for her three-part starter. There must be something fishy going on. Whew, this fish is very stinky. Mmm, stink fish, yummy. Emily adds fish sauce, red Thai paste, spring onions, coriander, an egg, lime juice, and chilli flakes. So there must be something fishy then the fish cakes get shaped up yes, you can for a fry-up. Next, it's on to the final part of the starter, the coconut prawns. Dip them first in the flour and in the egg. And then the coconut. Looks about right. So that's the prawns done. 
but time is ticking, Emily. It's on to the Moroccan tagine. A tagine is a stew named after the traditional cone-shaped dish it's cooked in, which helps to keep the meat especially moist. So I've got about half an hour until the mystery man gets here, and I'm getting a little bit nervous now. Hopefully, I'll be all right under pressure. Emily adds saffron, tomato puree, and olives to the onions. Time goes by so slowly. Better get started on those meaty balls. She mixes lamb mince with lemon zest, onions, and parsley, along with some chili, ginger, and an egg to bind it all. Lots of spices going into this. Cumin, cinnamon in, salt and pepper in there as well. Emily will be serving her tagine with potatoes, seasoned with harissa paste and honey. The mystery man is not far away. I still need to make myself look beautiful and tidy up because I'm not having any man come in my house and see it in this state. There's just time to pop the meatballs and stock in the mixture with a lemon. And tidy herself up, Richard's on his way. It's the, the first day of, of the week, and um, yeah, not sure what's in store, but I think that the spice is always right, so I, I'm feeling, feeling excited for a, for a spicy evening. I'm hoping he's going to be tall, dark, and handsome, uh, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. <laughs> as long as he's got a lovely personality, I think that's the most important thing. Could this date with Emily end up being the best? At least Richard's not wearing that leopard print vest. Hello. Hi. This is Dinner Date, the show where people hope to find true love through their love of good food. 23-year-old diamond valuer Richard is going on three romantic dinners, each cooked by a blind date. At the end of the week, he'll take one of his dates out for a meal they haven't had to cook. But right now, he's just arrived for his first date with recruitment consultant and belly dancer Emily. Hello. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Very good. How are you? Extremely well. Lock in the door. No chance of escape, Richard. Oh, thank you. Armed with a bottle of bubbly, talk turns to travel. Have you ever been to Morocco? Yeah, I went to Tangier and Marrakesh about two okay. or three years ago. And went on a camel called Humphrey, which was fun. Right, OK. And then had camel kebab for lunch. And that was the end of Humphrey. And what about you, Emily? No, I haven't, I've never been to Morocco. Um, What's the reason for the Moroccan food? Are you just... Um, I just thought it seemed quite kind of... Um, quite exotic, quite kind of flavourful. I do like that kind of food. Definitely do want to go to Morocco, so it's yeah. definitely on the list. Talking of the exotic, time to reveal her hobby. About a year ago, I started uh, belly dancing. Yeah. Ah, lovely. Yeah, so, yes, that's quite good fun, actually. Any good at that? You, can you do the, the hoop player type thing? Um, I think I'm all right. I've got some moves. Yeah, I'd say so. It's coming along. I'd be sticking dollar bills down my bra or anything, but... Uh... I'm sure it'd be $10 bills. <laughs> There's a compliment in there somewhere. What do they make of each other? Yeah, she's really, really pretty girl. Quite bubbly, quite confident. Um, something I always look for, for in, in every girl that I'm interested in. So, yeah, pretty intrigued by the, the belly dancing. <laughs> so, looking forward to her teaching me a few moves later on. He's not my usual type, no. But I think he seems to have a really nice 
a warm face and a nice smile, quite open, but um, he's even quite interested in my belly dancing. He's hoping I might give him a little dance later, but he's got no chance. <laughs> That's not belly friendly. <laughs> Time for the mixed hors d'oeuvre starter. Starter. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So, no, food wise, I'm open to anything, to be honest. Sometimes you want Chinese, sometimes you want a pizza, sometimes you want spaghetti carbonara. Myself, I have to say, I don't really cook too often. This is all quite new to me. Are you so. too, too busy bear dancing? Or? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. If he's anchoring for a performance, he ain't going to get one. So, did you enjoy your starter? That was amazing. Oh, brilliant. Well, bellissime, <laughs> as the Italians say. Ah, oh, yes, <laughs> well, very good. From Italy to Morocco, it's time for the main. I've just realised I've actually forgotten to put any veggies in the tagine, but luckily I've got some broccoli in the fridge, so I think I'm just going to pop that in the microwave so that the meal's complete. And here is the tagine. It smells amazing. It does smell quite nice, doesn't it, I have to say. <laughs> so it was your last meal. What would you, what would you go for? I think, um... I'd probably have to say... And, and, and bearing in mind, you have to belly dance after it. Give it up, Richard. He's like a dog with a bone. I do like a nice steak. What type of steak? Fillet steak. Fillet steak, obviously. Fillet steak. You, I think you Sorry. make a, a massive mistake if you don't have a, a fillet steak. <laughs> oh, he's here all week. Try the tagine. Is that a comfortable silence? So I think I've got to go and put my chocolate puddings in the oven, actually. Is Emily fearful of a fondant fail or trying to hurry things along? While Richard eats alone, things are hotting up in the kitchen. The question is, are they going to have a runny middle? And are they going to come away from the ramekins? Well, that's the question, but what's the answer? The big moment has arrived. Oh, no. Yeah. Definitely runny in the middle, then. And the top. And the sides. Oh, here's your dessert. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Well, they've definitely got melting middles, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. No shortage of liquid in the fondants, but the conversation's dried up. You're very quiet. <laughs> I'm enjoying, enjoying the dessert. Mm. Savouring the flavour. And with that final thought, dessert's done and the date is too. It was very nice to meet you. Amazing to meet you as well. Absolutely, oh, it was it was literally like grease lightning. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> High dramatic, systematic. What more could you want? For you to stop before you break into song. So, did Richard think his date was greased lightning? Personally, the vibe is always on uh, on the friendship level instead of uh, like personal or, or relationship material, so uh, happy that I've, I've made it, well, made friends with a great girl, but it's not going to be anything, anything more than that, I don't think. Richard will be the one who decides which of his dates to take out at the end of the week, but which of them will want to go out with him. All three dates will be scoring him out of a possible three stars. So, how did Emily rate her date? I um, had a really nice time with Richard. Not sure that romantically we're quite um, well suited. I thought he was maybe a little bit more reserved. I think I had to give him a rating out of three stars. I would give him two because there's always room for some improvement. That's two stars for Richard from Emily. She thought there was room for him to improve and she didn't want to show him her moves. Another day, another dinner date. And tonight, it's with 23-year-old Alison from Essex. I have been single uh, for about a year and a half now. I'm at the point where I'm looking for something more than just a, a, bit, a bit of fun, really. So what would make a gent a keeper? Good breath. I've been on some dates where their breath has made me want to run away quite quickly. Breath mints are the ready, Richard. 
When he saw Alison's menu, he thought she'd found the way to his heart with her fillet steak, and he couldn't wait for a lemon cheesecake. But will he be sweet on her? Alison begins with her mum's lemon cheesecake recipe, and she starts by crushing biscuits for the base. I'm just imagining this is an ex-boyfriend. Guessing that relationship didn't end well. She adds melted butter to the pulverised biscuits. The topping is made by adding lemon juice and zest to cream cheese. I hope he likes his cheese. Safe to say he's no stranger to cheese, our Richard. Next, it's in with icing sugar and caster sugar. It's never normally this runny, um, so I'm a bit worried that this might not set in time. I reckon if I put it in the freezer just for an hour, it might help, possibly. Nothing like the cold to stiffen something up. For the topping, the summer fruits are simmered with sugar and dessert's done. On to the starter, the goat's cheese tartlets. I've never made pastry before, so this is going to be a learning curve um, for me. Am I meant to use my hands? Ready to get down and dirty with my pastry. Handmade pastry done, Alison pops it into the fridge to rest. Next, the onions. And Alison has a tip so it doesn't end in tears. Once you've got the actual onion sort of ready to be chopped, close your eyes. You'll definitely cry if you chop finger, not onion. Try popping the onion into the fridge instead. The onions are fried with balsamic vinegar to caramelise, and it's onto the potato rosti. Okay. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> Got a little bit of nail varnish in there. Not in the recipe, that. Olive oil and seasoning is. Then I can just pop them in the oven. Back to the pastry. Rolling, yeah. Rolling. Rolling on. Oh, it's a little bit crumbly. Question is, how, I'm, how am I going to get this into the actual tin? I know there's some kind of trick where you put it over the rolling pin, isn't there? Um, I might just have to pick it up and kind of throw it and hope for the best. Go on, lob it! What's the worst that could happen? Oh, that. What a disaster! Cover it up with onions and goat's cheese. That'll hide your cracks. Time to make the peppercorn sauce for her steak main, with double cream, beef stock, wine, pepper and mustard. I'm just going to make it and then I can leave it to one side and quickly heat it up. Finally, some crack covering filling for the tart. Pop in the onions and I'm just going to add the goat's cheese. I'll just pop that back in the oven for about ten minutes. Starter salvaged. Cheesecake chilling, sauce on standby, and the prep's done. Just in time, Richard's en route. Really excited for tonight, really looking forward to it. I remember the punchline was the way to a man's heart, so hopefully she'll be finding uh, the way to my heart tonight. I'm quite excited now. I'm still a little bit nervous about the food, but I think I'm just intrigued now to see who he is, what he looks like. I hope I haven't dated him before, actually. That'd be awkward. Hi. Hey, yeah. how are you doing? I'm Alison. Nice to meet you. I'm Lovely Richard. Lovely to meet you. How are you? Very well, thank you. How's it Come going? Coming in. Our Essex girl serves up some posh plonk to start. Do you want me to open it for you? Ah, oh, that'd be really nice. Sure, sure. I nice. promise I haven't shaken it up. Are you not? <laughs> <laughs> shaking, shaking, not stirred. <laughs> Diamond dealer Richard's a pro when it comes to popping the cork. Oh, amazing! Right, I'm going to grab some strawberries. Thank you very much. Not so much with the pouring. So I wouldn't yeah. spill it, but... Um, oh, no! <laughs> what have you done? Spillage is leakage, so... Oh, no! That's exactly what I was about to say. Spillage equals leakage. <laughs> 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 well, apart from the spillage, um... <laughs> Cheers! Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, 
Oh, no, I've just ripped it all over my dress. <laughs> Drinking problems in common, then, and Richard's already sized up his date. I believe that good things come in small packages. Well, I'm only five foot three. Five foot so, three? Amazing. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully that fits in there somewhere. Well, I'm, I'm like five foot nine, so I've got a few inches on you. Oh, OK, I thought you were taller than that. Really? Yeah. Why's that? <laughs> it must my, be in the hair. My left piece of hair. <laughs> Can I touch it? Please do, yeah. It's, it's like a spiky, it's Ooh. like a porcupine. Oh, it's not going to move, is it? What do they make of each other? Is Richard's hair do a hair don't? He's not bad looking, so um, definitely the hair was a stand up point though. Um, I had a little feel of it as well and um, it feels like he has more hair products in it than I have in my own. So I'm um, not sure whether he'd, um, he'd be spending more time in the bathroom than me or not, which got a way up. It seems like a really nice girl. Uh, she's pretty hot and perfect in terms of like size wise. She's five foot three. I like a guy who's a bit smaller than me. She's very attractive and someone I can definitely get on with. And yeah, really, really excited to see what happens tonight. Will the date be as cheesy as Alison's tart or will her steak find the way to Richard's heart? Dinner Date, the show where people hope to find true love through their love of good food. 23-year-old diamond valuer Richard is going for three blind dates and each date is making him dinner. It's not he's already right dined with recruitment consultant Emily. And right now, he's just arrived for his date with sales executive Alison. Oh, amazing. <laughs> oh, dig him. Oh, well. That is really nice. Take your word for it. So why did Richard pick Alison's menu? He sold it on the on the main course. Oh really? Yeah, where's your heart? Your filet mignon. Mm-hmm. If anyone hadn't have liked having steak, I probably would yeah. have thought not my type anyway. Yeah, massive <laughs> mistake. Yeah. It, oh, exactly. He knows how to play on words. Exactly. Oh, got to admire his commitment to that gag. Might even get a laugh by date three. So what do you reckon? Is the pastry all right? Amazing. Have poisoned yeah. you yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> what would your favourite kind of dessert be? Because that's always a tricky one with a guy. Well, I, I like to be able to squeeze on some lemons, so... The menu then you... I will bring you some lemons to squeeze. Uh, how, how do you like your lemon squeeze? <laughs> Steady on, Richard. You've only just met. <laughs> Let's hope this talk of manhandling lemons doesn't sour proceedings. For the main course, Alison wilts the spinach and adds cream, onions and garlic. She cooks the steak and refries her potato rusty. Oop. Ah, cream is going everywhere. Oh, dear. Not the best thing to happen on a first date. Leakage addressed and the main is served. There you go. Mm. Just be careful, plate's a little bit hot. Okay. Bon appetit. Holy peppercorns, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Good. So when, when you're out in, in London and you want to meet a normal guy, mm -hmm. what are the type of normal guys that you're going to speak to? I've never hugely enjoyed approaching guys. I'm sitting in a bar in, in central London, mm -hmm. having some, some wine and then Alison waddles over. Mm -hmm. Did he say waddles? Uh, what's going to be your, your, your hello, how you doing? My hello, my hello would just be something very simple. No, have a